Meint ihr nicht, wir könnten unterschreiben, auf das uns ein bis zwei Prozent gehören und Tausende uns hörig sind? Wir könnten, aber... Einstürzende Neubauten ist, on one hand, is the expression that you would use for buildings that collapse uh, by itself due to like bad concrete materials or anything like that, that were raised after the Second World War, in opposite to Altbauten, which are buildings raised before the Second World War. Also, and even more well known, is the fact that there is a band in Berlin that existed for more than 20 years that uh, goes by the name Einstürzende Neubauten. The most important thing about this group is that we maintain the state of being a group of uh, individuals. It's uh, Blixer Bargeld singing, it's Alex Hacke playing the bass, it's Rudy Moser playing drum kit, it's me doing percussion and it's Jochen Arbeit doing the guitars. Everyone in the group is working on their own career and doing a couple of things on the side. And without doing that, we wouldn't have been around that long. Um, because there's stuff that I can only do with Einstürz and Neubauten, and there's certainly stuff that I cannot do with Einstürz and Neubauten. We have not done anything for uh, a good two years. Since the uh, release of the last record, we uh, wrote another, uh, another soundtrack, which was released as a record too, and did another compilation. I done a compilation and we went on, a, on, a, on an extended European and American tour. That's the thing about this band, it's never uh, sure are we coming up again or not. We're not talking about that problem, what media are kind of doing, are they still existing or not? We're not thinking this way, it was just a kind of, what are you doing Rudy? I said, mm, this and that and this, do you have time, meeting, yeah, why not, uh, yeah, okay, we work again, okay. Hmm. We were again about ready to break up in, in the year 2000 because even though it was our 20th anniversary it turned out to be just a repetition of the, the same old game, you know, like you <coughs> spend a couple of years in putting together this format which you all know like a 70 minute CD, then you take a couple of years uh, promoting that product by touring and it all turned out to be um, rather unsatisfying and boring. So instead of splitting up and completely giving up the, uh, our, our task or our mission, we decided that we have to explore other ways. The idea started around the year 2000, when Neubauten was on tour in the US, and they had record label problems with Silence is Sexy. And at that time, I was working with various internet projects, and I basically started talking to them about the possibility of using the internet to distribute their music and for artists like them. And so we came together in the uh, autumn of 2002 and uh, outlined this particular project which is more or less based on, uh, on the idea of, of getting a record produced by ourselves with the help of supporting people. So we took like the, um, the infrastructure of certain sites um, well, we took the infrastructure of like porn sites where basically what they sell you on a porn site is intimacy. That's what people pay for, to get close. And uh, well, we're providing the same service. You can get close to us by paying for it. So it's in a way very similar to a porn site. And we're using the same like uh, credit card mechanisms and stuff like that. We can give it to a record company and we can say, 
we want this and that much advance, or we, if we don't have, we, we get money back right away because there are no production costs to be paid, because the production costs are paid already. And what we do is we make it to two different editions. One edition will be a, a special edition just for the supporters, containing different materials, uh, having a different um, a different cover and everything, and uh, never, never to come, never to get to the shops. So it will be an ultra rare record that will be handled very personally. Of course, there will be a, a, a normal, a, so to speak, a normal album too. To go with the politics of the whole scene, I, I would have much more preferred to say uh, we release it ourselves, or we. Uh, but we could not work out any kind of a, of a way to get distribution around the world safely done. Technically, it's about as small as you can imagine. I mean, webcams, there are three webcams total. Two of them are just tiny little simple USB webcams that you can buy for about 100 euros each. Uh, the USB cabling actually costs more than the webcams themselves. And um, one of them is a normal camcorder that has a USB connection and the whole thing is being run basically on my laptop. So it's a really extremely small, simple, cheap setup. This website gives a perfect platform to answer questions, to give uh, people an insight of what we're doing in studio, in a rehearsal room. You get more than a record in the end. You can watch us playing, you can participate in the sense of uh, that we are very actively communicating, answering, uh, taking suggestions. I have taken many suggestions about what to do about particular songs, etc. We even put the rough mixes there. We give you a special concerts and uh, special downloads and uh, things like that. It's like getting an, an outside view of what we do immediately. You know, it's not like we uh, do things, record them, release them, and then get the review, you know. We get like the review before we even recorded something. And uh, of course, it, I mean, it, it can be frustrating, <laughs> but, uh, but mostly it's, um, I mean, if people like it, if people like the things we do for the, the intended reasons, then we know that we are not doing wrong. That's a like we did, for example, with uh, Dead Friends, I think it was, and uh, we had eight takes, different takes, and we had to make it up in mind which part to use of which take. We asked the supporters, and they were pretty much the same opinion as we. A couple times we are uh, sending out that we need uh, voices for different parts in the music, and they're sending us by email or CDs uh, their voices with the text line we gave them, for example. Usually we do about six webcasts a month, and those webcasts are usually grouped together within a single week or so. I did a concert on, on our website uh, in December, playing my kind of electronic beats and uh, guitar feedback and, you know, like wild kind of stuff that I do when I, when I play for myself. And, um, and I did it at uh, 5 o'clock in the morning, Central European time. So I would get like the prime time uh, uh, show in the States. Our engineer Boris and the webmaster <laughs> certainly were rather tired. But uh, you know, you can you can look it up in the in the website. You know, like the actual archived stream is still on it. And also, I mixed my favorite parts of it and put them out as a downloadable CD on that same side. You feel very removed, not only from the audience, but you feel very removed like from reality. The funniest thing what I think is that you don't know who's watching you. Who, uh, um, if someone is watching you who, who knows you or not. The fact that a lot of people are watching this and a lot of people are commenting in the same time of it because there's a live chat going on and they say, hey, yeah, good, or clap, 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 or you see that they, they drift away in what they talk and that they're absolutely not interested in what we're doing in the moment will, uh, did make some change, it did make some impact. Actually, it made the, the recording possible only because it, it was a new, a new aspect 
for the band a new motivation to do the record at all? Even I like all the anarchist qualities of this band, there was much more discipline than usually. Once you know that you're broadcasting, you have to be there and you have to be able to work. So we said there a broadcast from two to six and or whatever times we had and it, this time we did work and we worked much more concentrated and much more effectively than what we would usually do. During working, you forget about the webcams completely, but still in the back of your mind, you always have that you have to do something. It's a bit of a show every time too. I mean, you have to offer something to the supporters. So, although you don't think about it while you're doing it, but still it's always there. And it made, I mean, it pushed the whole thing forward a lot. It hasn't changed much on how we work in our field of work. We still, you know, analyze and uh, produce and pretty much the same way. It probably it has, uh, it has changed a bit how we treat each other while the camera is running. You know, we don't, you don't as easily uh, start fights or f say stupid things while, you know, you know there's a couple of hundred people watching. You know, you, you start to forget that too. I mean, we were more cautious and uh, better prepared on, <laughs> I think even to the extent on uh, how we look, you know, like in the first couple of months, you know. I have no problem with that because these cameras are that small. So there's not too much respect for the camera because you don't recognize that there is a camera. It's like, you know, if you've been monitored by, say, the authorities, you know, in the beginning you worry about it, hey, they know everything I do, they know all the drugs I take, you know. But then after a while, you forget about it. And that's, a very, that's basically the most worrying fact about it, that you, uh, you know, that you just like block out this very important part, you know, that somebody is watching you while you do these things. The funny thing is that the piece Sent Seltener Vogel, I, we played in the like earliest session in August. I would have shelved it. I would have like after two attempts doing it and not being happy with it, I would have thrown it away. But uh, the supporters kept insisting and saying, yeah, you should, uh, you should, uh, this is really great and you should do something, etc., uh, etc., cetera, et cetera, that uh, it ended up to be recorded. Same story goes for Der Weg ins Freie, which, uh, which I have thrown away already and uh, it was the insistence of basically of the supporters that made me rethink it. And I think, hmm, 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 until we actually started recording it again. It was interesting and it still is interesting to meet these people by these means. Um, I mean, usually you talk to, um, you know, drunken people in the backstage room after a show, which is fine, I enjoy that. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, there's some, some really intelligent and worthwhile people out there that we have um, correspondence with by, by these means. And this is something that usually wouldn't happen, you know. I mean, the, the uh, quality, the standards, the niveau of, of the communication is a lot higher than it, it would be in a backstage room or via usual fan mail or something like that. What's, what's going on in the forum I found interesting for a... I admire our the intelligence of our fans. These threads are fairly intelligent and they are, they are a lot of good, good stuff in there. And, uh, and B, I like it that they are... that we have not put any censoring mechanisms in there and they still seem to be self-regulating. So basically this whole interchange, the whole correspondence with the people that actually love the stuff you do, 
you know, not not some paid journalist, you know, who is uh, supposed to come up with something uh, insulting, <laughs> you know, um, you know, has has helped a lot. Usually, Neubaut need about two years to make a record. It usually means we meet at, at some time. Say we say, okay, we're going to go to the studio for two weeks, and there we just hammer away and do this and do that and uh, end up with like 15 unfinished pieces of which I take ideas at home and then we spend six months not doing anything and I think about it and then we go back to the studio and throw half of it away and start the other half anew and, and so on. I do what I always do, I, I collect um, say metal stuff um, from the shops or from the junkyard or from some, some other places and try to make them as, uh, try to find them as transportable as always so they can work on stage uh, as instruments and look good. Life on other planets is difficult. I don't hardly ever write anything about anything, but uh, of course things uh, things find my thoughts find their ways into songs in different ways. It's quite interwoven. And in working here on this on this particular record, I take particular ideas, which could be lyrical ideas as well as ideas in the true sense of the word, and uh, I intertwine them with other ideas and see that they become a, a fairly complex network for me to to start throwing throwing things to it. So then then I hope they're going to stick on it after a while and maybe form a particular pattern that I can follow and hang uh, a, a, a more complex thought on it. That is, and uh, once that, that is working, that worked, we are in the middle of mixing, that worked quite well in as much as I can see that uh, particular pieces of this puzzle fall together for me now and I can see the larger picture. I wake up in the morning with solutions for text. Somehow something sinks within me even when I'm asleep. So I wake up, and I have a half a solution, and then I usually have to get up out of bed and write down what my thought was. Good lyrics do write themselves, but you can't force them. You know, bad lyrics need a lot of doctoring, and the doctoring doesn't help. That's my experience about lyrics. This production works a lot with uh, winds and um, that's why we are hiring um, three compressors so that we can blow air into any objects and so when we're doing um, that with pipes, with plastic pipes, um, um, we were just moving the valve um, in front of the object so I thought the other way around one could have a moving object and hold the nozzle in front of that. The direction that I started on was that I wanted to do more things with, with compressors, with air, with the general idea of pneuma and with birds, etc. And, 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 and all this, this field was, uh, was another chart that was hanging in the bunker. That's why I built the so-called air cake, which is basically a record player with three layers of cut off bottles so you can just blow into these bottles and that gives different sounds. Many things we do are more or less uh, scientific research, you know, 
if, if we were to be, you know, graded academically, you know, we would all be fucking doctors by now, <laughs> you know, for, for what we've, you know, the research we've, we've gone through. Besides we are doing barbecue, we also bang on this. <laughs> yeah. And this is an old computer lid. Yeah, it all sounds the same. Become a special symbol. I make drums here. <laughs> this is also a drum part, yeah, from air conditioning part. And this is plastic drums. They're gonna be cut uh, over there, and then you're gonna use them as as drums. Yeah, this is a uh, weapon cupboard. This is a weapon. And this also sounds... Yeah. Uh, there's more over there. <laughs> it's old parts which are used. Parts and canisters, yeah. They sound good. doesn't sound good anymore. Mm -hmm. You get the idea? Yeah, when I think it over, yeah, some, some mechanical stuff um, I like a lot. The, the bell machine or the lottery machine. Um, the air cake is also mechanical, kind of, with uh, four speeds. Um, then I experimented a lot with um, window wiper motors, they're quite handy. Um, once I, I built an installation of uh, self-playing drums and they were also based on window wiper motors. I built a four meter long guitar which is red and really big and two minute long sustain on the strings and on the body because I built some springs also inside, which is unusual for a guitar, just to have a very, very, very long sustain and very bass, bassy, deep frequencies. It was um, like always looking for different locations, instruments, and so we did a lot of expeditions like that where, that we just did to the motorway. Uh, I mean, Blixer found out that space. Another one was the water tank standing beside the railway main station, and you could approach that tank by going climbing up a ladder 10 meters high, and then finally found a very nice acoustic phenomena uh, similar to that one the motorway where everything is from metal uh, metal around you and uh, you have that uh, metal banging in your ears and the water tower was kind of similar you heard the other person with the echo and that is somehow um, a fantastic uh, atmosphere to do sounds in we've basically done it all you know We've played every milk can. <laughs> we've played, you know, bigger venues. Um, we've played smaller venues. 
It's like, like always you get the question, why are you doing uh, the music, how you do your music? Um, so these kind of questions are kind of not answerable for me. Well, I was, you know, I was 14 when I started, you know, I haven't had any um, experience in uh, many crucial fields of uh, life. <laughs> and, uh, well, you know, now I'm going close uh, to 40 and, uh, and many things that I needed to express when I was younger, I don't need to express anymore, you know, even there might be a demand for us setting stages on fire or there might be a demand for us, you know, doing this like really ultra violent stuff, you know, but basically as time goes on, you know, like you get more focused and more specific. And I look at the world differently than when I, when I was young. I mean, that's, you know, as an artist, you're supposed to express, you know, express yourself and, you know, you're supposed to make a make a point and for me there's certain things that basically that there was a point back then in expressing these but uh, right now you know has been said you know has been done you know and, and we'll find we'll find other ways to go on your nerves <laughs> We were going to finish this record and then we're going, going to do promotion for this record. We're probably going to do a video clip for this record and then we're going to go on tour. And that tour is going to, uh, going to take us through uh, old and new Europe and uh, through, uh, through the United States and possibly Australia. Canada, of course, too. But uh, yeah. Well, this is going well. So we, we managed to to develop a, uh, a thread of communication that hasn't been there before. And certainly we're gonna use it and exploit it as far as we can go, you know, this whole website. This whole website thing has to, um, has to be further exploited. I mean, the whole idea of this um, webcast can continue in other forms, I mean, there could be Tour, tour footage of being taking part in our tour with live pictures and audio. So I think we should continue this website in a different form or the same form. We have to find a solution there. What we did not want to do about this website is making it, say, from the beginning on, we didn't want to do that, making it something like a monthly payment thing or a membership thing. So we, con we offered something very clearly. We said, well, this is going to be about the making of a record and you're going to get a record. Once you've got the record, uh, there's, of course, everything else we would do after that would be just paying. No problem. So what we have to do is the next thing that comes up after that is a tour. I guess the next thing we offer is something that is connected with a tour. Right now we are looking at how we might do what I'm thinking of as Neubatten org phase two. I think the community that has been growing on this website would be very disappointed if the whole thing just dies down basically with the last webcast of the recording of this record. So we have to come up with a couple of new things and in the intermediate in the intermediate period in between we have to do some other things. We probably have to do a, a, a couple more online concerts or something like that before we come to the actual tour. And then we can broadcast the rehearsals for the tour. How is that? Bis ich deine Träume im dunklen Leuchten sehe. Hüge.